Okay, so over the past week or so, I've actually missed out on a few things, and I actually haven't been doing anything YouTube or, you know, social media related kind of since the year start, which does not mean that, actually, let me do this, which does not mean that I'm going to stop doing watch zone videos or anything, but it just means that I didn't want to start the year off just completely rushing things out, rather just take my time with a few things. But like I said, there are a lot of technical related things that came out uh, throughout the week since the year started, and they're actually pretty good. So with that being said, uh, what am I doing? What's going on, Misfits? As always, my name is Chaos the Gamer, and yeah, I just felt like checking out some things that you may or may have not seen over the past weekend from CEO or just in general coming out, right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is, well, let me just tell you, I've got a Lego PS5 to talk about, I've got a gaming desk to talk about, I've got a portable device to talk about for gaming, I have another Wi-Fi gaming router that I'll have to check out, and I have a foldable OLED laptop to talk about, or just check out for a second. But this article is titled, hmm. These Bricktastic PS5 and Xbox Series X LEGO sets could become reality. Starting off from the top, this article reads, If you thought the Super Mario LEGO 64 set, sorry, Super Mario 64 LEGO set was awesome, then you're in for a special treat. A creative LEGO builder has come up with the designs for a PS5 and Xbox Series X LEGO sets, and they're pretty impressive. Twitch streamer aficionado, sorry, Twitch streamer and Lego aficionado Brick Nick revealed on Twitter that he submitted two designs to the Lego Ideas Project. One is for is for a PS5 Lego set, and the other is for an Xbox Series X Lego set. The sets themselves are pretty cool, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, they're gonna need some, yeah, these type of sets are gonna need some polishing before they hit store shelves. The PS5 design is made up of a pretty realistic recreation of the PlayStation 5 console and a DualSense controller while the Xbox Series X is made up of an Xbox wireless controller and the Xbox Series X console recreation. And if I'm correct, there is a video that I attached myself to. Well, correction, there's a few images here. And I have to actually say, for what this is, Sony is... Obviously, this dude did not get Sony's permission to do this, but this is dope as hell. Like, honestly, if you don't have a PS5, this would be not your next step up, but, like, this is a gift for just someone who's a lover of PlayStation in general, you know? What's also cool about this is that they actually made a video about it. Well, I mean, obviously, you're going to want to make a video to promote your stuff, but... The fact that you actually take the time to promote it in that way. And like I said, I'm pretty sure this is not made by Sony at all. But it would be a really good concept idea. Go to Lego's Ideas and vote now. Link in the description. So you can actually vote for this to become an actual thing. I mean, it's pretty badass. If we're really looking at this, dude, this is pretty badass. And that's what I'm saying. The inside folds in. Like, I know for a fact there has to be, there's, you can probably put your own Lego set inside for whatever Lego games that you have inside. This is honestly a really good idea. To be honest, this would make me want to actually buy this rather than an actual PS5 because a PS5 I cannot actually use. Uh, currently, I can't really use a PS5 for any reason because they're so scarce to get. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was Project Sophia, which is heard to be the world's first modular gaming desk concept. Who? Yeah, I highly doubt that it's the first the world's first version of this, but, you know, I digress.
Holy shit, these visuals. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna watch that one more time. Because what are they actually offering inside here? Nothing. I don't think they showed anything spec wise just now. I don't think fully modular, customly, completely customizable, yeah. That is actually kind of dope. Nice and customize it. Frequency on your seat, the GPU and the CPU temperature. Uh, THX spatial surround sound control system monitoring module programmable hotkeys uh, raid controller not bad with the raid controller system power turn on uh, Razer Kia Pro I don't know how good of a webcam that is but I'm betting it's actually pretty better than the one that I have right now uh, Razer Siren V2 it doesn't come with that, does it? Does it come with both of these, or are these just accessories? Uh, streamer production controller. There's a chat viewer. Yo, that's actually kind of dope. That's actually kind of cool. Like, digital audio equalizer, network performance. Uh, like, if this is... I would say... I wouldn't call this... I mean, I guess you can call this a gaming desk, but I guess you could say you can definitely... Advertise this towards streamers. Uh, what was that? Sorry. Uh, Thunderbolt powered ED GPU, whatever. Touchscreen digitizer module with a stylus and a control wheel. Okay. You can probably do custom blah blah blah. Team communication, digital planner. Okay, so each one of these boxes, you can actually customize to have something else inside. So you don't have to have, and I'm pretty sure your keyboard could be right here, or you could have a virtual keyboard. The words first modular gaming desktop. I honestly think that they should continue to make things modular. Having things be completely uh, hardware restrict. I honestly think that a lot of things in the future sake should be a lot more modular. So does this have a, does this have a site? Uh, of course they do. Like I said, I find it a little interesting that they don't give some Speculation? Oh, come on, dude. Design forever user, the game maker, creator, blah, blah. Taken to the edge. Yeah, not necessarily uh, with support for 65 or 77 display Sophia Project Office 4 control. Not bad. I'm not gonna lie. The whole, the stylus and being able to have certain, thing mod, certain things modular in terms of like the chat. Uh, certain hotkeys can be swapped out. Uh, switching raid controllers. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. But one thing I didn't see was the price. What would be the price of this? I don't even know if this is actually out yet. Hold on, I wanna see. Is this actually out? Can I buy this? Huh. Maybe not yet. Maybe it's just a con maybe it's just a work in progress concept. I'm not sure if you can buy it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be at least. Man, let's really think about it. That's at least a 3090. At least the price of a 3090 or two 3090s because there's a lot in there, and you get an LED screen. I mean, whatever type of screen that is. I don't know if it's an OLED screen or what, but whatever screen that is. All right, all right, all right, all right. Probably on to the next thing. Probably on to the next thing. So the next thing was other than a modular gaming desk, uh, Aya Neo, which is I'm not gonna lie. If you know about the Aya Neo, the first concept of it, 
I hope they actually have it. Nah, they don't. So we're just going to scroll through a few things about the Aya Neo. Coming in at the price of 13000 Sorry, $1,345. The Aya Neo Next is the estimated delivery time is at the end of February. Wow. So this is like a response to basically portable gaming in a whole. If I'm going to be very honest, when it comes to portable gaming... It really isn't there other than the concept of mobile games or if you have a Nintendo Switch. And mobile games are good for what they are. Uh, they can be kind of gacha gamey or kind of money grubby, but let's be honest, a lot of things these days are. But the Nintendo Switch itself is good for what it is, but it doesn't have the graphic fidelity to pull off a lot of really good AAA games or just non-AAA games in general. It just doesn't really pull a lot of things graphically. And it doesn't give you a lot of things, how can I say, as a gamer. And it also doesn't have a very reliable level of durability, battery life, etc, etc. Granted, I don't know how that is with the Switch OLED. But regardless, this is a tackle against, let's say, the Steam Deck as well as the uh, Nintendo Switch. Basically, there's not a lot of mobile gaming and granted mobile gaming isn't necessarily a thing these days it used to be a very popular thing with game boy and game boy advance as well as uh the nintendo ds and stuff like that right as well as the psp as well ryzen amd 5800 cdu all right whoa, whoa 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 this is the good stuff this is the good stuff uh joystick linear trigger seven inch h high brightness screen Design, whatever, certificates, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, replaceable joysticks. That's actually kind of dope. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, high-speed reading. Is that... Oh, that's SSD. Okay, no, no, no. What's the RAM, though? Are they DDRs? Are they MMEs or... 2 terabyte NVM solid state drive, 3... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So they're using... I don't know if those are DDR RAM slots, though. Fingerprint, tap to wake up. That's kind of dope. Maybe a little unnecessary because, you know, a power button is just a power button, dude. Uh, You don't need your gaming thing to also add, like, an iPhone. Even though that would be kind of cool, I guess. Innovative cooling architecture, two channel speakers, 47 watt long battery life, IS space game management, etc. etc. Two channel space exclusive at any time, quick opening function. All right, all right. So, yeah, basically, I feel like mobile gaming these days just does not have a very good, there's not a decent market for mobile gaming because let's be honest, if unless you, how can I say this? If you're someone who travels a lot and you don't have time to game, I highly doubt that you taking a mobile gaming device is going to do anything better for you because you can't necessarily, unless you're on like a long flight or something, you can't necessarily enjoy that mobile gaming device if you're always worried about just trying to worry about business and doing your work anyway. So I'd say when it comes to having a mobile device, maybe in the future? maybe in the future it would be a lot better like let's say let's be honest dude your kid loves minecraft and you have a six hour road trip down and you're driving and you don't have a special car that has like a tv monitor in the back and everything but you have this thing that can help your kid play minecraft or minecraft dungeons or hell even fortnite or h1z1 or possibly even forza or something like that right Things like this for a certain person is going to work. But I'm not going to lie. If you're a console gamer like me or a desktop gamer like me necessarily, this may not necessarily be worth it to you because when I'm out hanging out, when I'm outside, I don't worry about trying to game or anything. You know, like, wait, you can actually. Can you stream it to a device? So it looks like he's streaming that onto his uh, desktop device. And that's actually kind of dope. If you can do that as well. 
What? Of course there's three different editions. Of course there's three different editions. Of course there is three different editions. Uh, just like the, just like, I wouldn't say the Switch OLED, just like the Steam Deck, there's three different versions of it, and obviously the one that you're gonna, go, you're gonna wanna go for is the top tier version that has 36 gigs of DDR4, as well as two terabytes, as well as a Ryzen 7, as well as, let's be honest, hmm, all that's about the same. That's about the same. Function type C port. That's about the same. Fingerprint unlock. That's about the same. That's about the same. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, usually between the three, it's always a dramatic, dramatic difference in what you're trying to get. So they all have a Ryzen 7. They have a Radeon Vega 8 with the slight difference in megahertz. No, the megahertz is actually the same. Uh, 16 gigs between them both. So I'd say the difference between them would honestly be the amount of stores that you get. Huh, this doesn't make any sense. Why would you? Oh, this is the old iNeo. Okay, or am I wrong? I don't know, man. It's it's complicated sometimes when it comes to specs, but I'm pretty sure this is the iNeo next. Oh, this is the advanced. This is the next. The next comes in three different colors. The next Pro has two terabytes as well as 32 gigs of DDR. All right, all right, I understand. But yeah, with all that still being said, the concept of a mobile gaming device to me isn't a bad idea, but I think that's gonna be applied to a very specific person in a very specific market. Like, because of the fact that we have gaming consoles, it makes it really hard to determine whether mobile gaming is like, a decent thing like see these guys they're chilling at home and they're playing their favorite game maybe they're actually playing the same game together i think that's forza it'd be dope if you can play the same game together inside of a house just like the nintendo switch game not gonna lie that'd be pretty dope the, the only reason that you would have this though is if you don't have a console though that's my only thing and granted if the price was a little bit more friendlier I would probably see myself getting it, but for right now, it is not necessarily something that I'm going to see myself uh, thriving to get, but you know. All right, all right, all right. Got two more things that I wanted to actually look at and talk about tech-wise, and I'm not going to lie. When it comes to wireless gaming routers, none of them have worked. Just about none of them have worked. Because the wire, the router itself has to be compatible with your internet service, if I'm correct. As well as like a few other things in general. But, hmm. Should I read this or should I just watch the video? Let's just watch the video. I'd be a psycho if I didn't just watch the video. Last year, Asus launched the world's first Wi-Fi 60 router. And this year, we're introducing the world's first four-band Wi-Fi 60 gaming router, the ROG Rapture GT-AXE 16000. We have unlocked the full potential of four bands, 2.4 GHz to 5 GHz band and 6 GHz with 160 MHz channels so users can achieve up to 16,000 Mbps per second Wi-Fi speed. The exclusive ASUS AMH technology allows users to link different ASUS routers to create a whole home match system. With the availability of 4 band, users now have more choice when connecting an AMH system. For users with Wi-Fi 60 devices, you can use one of the 5 GHz band as a dedicated backhaul to the central router, so the other three bands are free for device connection. On the other hand, you can also use the 6 GHz band as a backup with another 60 supported router which provides cleaner and faster transmission between two routers for an optimized mesh experience. GT-AXE 16000 is powered by a next-gen flagship Broadcom 2.0 GHz quad-core 64-bit CPU and Wi-Fi chipset. 
these improved throughput by 18% compared to the previous generation for lightning fast data transfers, along with the exclusive ASUS RF technology and RAM Boost Plus. It leveraged multiple upgraded ASUS features that improve Wi Fi signal range and overall coverage by up to 38% compared to Wi Fi 5 routers without RAM Boost Plus. To give advanced users everything they need for fast and flexible connectivity, the router comes with dual 10 gigabit LAN ports that provide extra bandwidth to heavy duty network devices such as the compatible NAS or desktop PC. 4 1 gigabit LAN ports and a 2.5 gigabit WAN port. Damn, bro, I'm not gonna lie. Damn, bro. <laughs> That's a lot of ports, son. <laughs> That's a lot of ports, 2.0 and 3.0. Hold on, hold on, back up. That's a lot of ports, man. That's a lot of ports. Like, damn, bro. I thought my regular router had some ports. I think, bro, four LAN points, a 2.5, and you also get... Come on. Those two ports over there at the side. That is insane. But of course, like I said, gaming routers are just gaming routers. And before I actually stop, uh, given how rare quad bound 6E routers are, the Aces Raw Capture GT 1600 is perhaps unsurprisingly on the expensive side. It's set to cost around. $650 when it goes on sale later this quarter, but compared to Netgear's quad round Audi router, da, 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 which cost the better part of $1,500 for a three pack of mesh routers, Asus router looks more affordable. All right, but it, like I said, gaming routers are always very, dude, I do my gaming and streaming sometimes at the same time, and sometimes I legit just don't have a problem, but if I just simply don't have enough megabyte upload or download, I just have to deal with that. And I'm not sure if a gaming router will actually fix that problem. What I think this is probably for is if you have multiple users and multiple devices that all take different frequencies and different length wavelengths, like between, you know, 2.4, uh, five gigahertz and six gigahertz, I think it would be useful if you have different devices with that. But if you're honestly just a dude sitting at your house by yourself, I don't necessarily think that this is going to improve anything or any stream quality or anything like that necessarily. Because again, uh, it is announced as a gaming router, just the way that this is a gaming chair, but it just still feels like a regular chair to me. Moving on, moving on to the very last piece and I'm not gonna lie, this isn't, I wasn't gonna actually talk about this, but I wanted to only because foldable things are becoming like more of a thing. And it's just kind of crazy to me that this might actually be more along the lines of the future. And to be honest, if I could actually have a foldable tablet that I could carry around with me that's pretty affordable, that can do a lot of things and be very versatile, I would probably do it as well. So, I hope this isn't a long article read. Okay, it's not that read. It's not that long, it's not that long, it's not that long. It's not that long. All right, each year it seems that more companies are trying out devices with foldable screens. In the PC space, results for those have been pretty mixed. But Asus is known for doing funky things, especially funky things with screens. So it was only a matter of time before the company tried its head at one of these. And we're finally getting a look at first generation. Say hello to the ZenBook 17 Fold OLED. It's an OLED screen, which is a 17.3 inch laptop with a foldable OLED screen, which you just said. For those seeking a more traditional offering, there's a uh, clamshell ZenBook 14 OLED coming this year. The primary benefit of a folding device, apart from the fact that it looks really freaking cool, is that it makes a larger screen easier to fit into purses and bags. A 17 inch tablet in particular might be a pain for many people to carry around, no matter how thin and light it may be. But there are also a few more options for how you can use a foldable like this. You can unfold it and use it like a regular tablet. You can prop it up with a kickstand, or you can fold it sideways at a 90 degree angle and use it like a miniature clamshell. 
This is what I enjoyed about the ThinkPad X1 Fold. Lenovo shot at this type of thing. All right, I'm not gonna read that. I'm gonna skip through some of this. Inside the ZenBook comes with the 12th Zen Intel Core i7 U-Series processors and up to 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. It includes an Asus Screen Expert 2 software also on its recent dual screen devices to help a more easily split screen and arrange its contents. One of the problems with the thin high resolution devices, the full 25 by 1920, is often battery life. All those pixels suck up juice and a smaller device tends to have less room for a large brick. The X1 Fold did not last very long. However, the ZenBook 17 has a 75 watt WH battery life. I gotta figure out what that means. Which is a fairly large for a product that's less than half an inch thick and bigger than what comes in many 13 inch thin and light laptops. Continuing on, the Zen Fold 17 OLED will be available in quarter two 2022 with pricing to be announced. I imagine it will be expensive. At least he's honest about that. At least he's honest about that. Now I'm not going to go too much into the rest of it, but yeah, uh, foldable devices have been more, more and more popular. And honestly, there's something that I've been kind of looking away from because I feel like they still would need some work. But now with this being like 2022, uh, I have a feeling that it's not going to be, not, not necessarily a go-to for everyone, but <clears throat> rather than me getting a regular tablet or a regular iPad or something like that, I see myself getting more of a foldable laptop slash tablet, whatever this thing is going to be. And especially considering the fact that the, it has an OLED screen, I'm not going to lie, I do want a device with an OLED screen because... OLEDs are the shit. From what I understand, OLEDs are the shit. If you get a... But I think if you get a dead pixel on an OLED screen, it's a nightmare for you. But, like I said, OLEDs are probably the shit in terms of their overall fidelity. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about some really good things that happened this year. Uh, starting off this year, at least, with CEO and a few other things that are coming about. Not a lot of gaming news going on, to be honest. And I'm very surprised by that because usually, as I try to adjust myself, I'm surprised that there's not a lot of gaming-related concepts other than the Lego thing that I've talked about and people not necessarily wanting NFT games or NFTs inside of their AAA games. There hasn't been a lot of gaming news out there except for PlayStation VR 2. That's another thing that came out. Or is going to come out. But ultimately, not a lot of things about, you know, anything gaming technology-wise that's really, really hype. But again, it's just the beginning of the year and a few things are going to be coming out later. Usually June is when a lot of gaming announcements start to happen for some really hype things to happen. But, you know, with... Everything going on with different uh, variants of COVID and stuff like that. And also, if I'm correct, E3 may not happen this year. I forget what it was. E3 probably won't happen this year. I have a feeling that a lot of events are probably going to have to go online. But, you know, regardless of which, if you like hearing me rant about a bunch of random stuff that's going on, I thank you. I thank you a lot because I love doing it. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Chaos the Gamer. And yeah, GG's. I'll see you around. And I hope your year is going good. Your year better be good. Because I'm going to make mine good. I'm going to make mine good. <laughs> see ya.